And even though we are a technology company, we're an information technology business, we're an IT services company, um, we're really in the people business. Um, while we're in IT, so we're in the IT services industry, we're really, we're really a people company by choice. Atrion culture is people. It is the family. Uh, it is this, um, this group that are, are coming together to, to do great things. The following special program is brought to you by Atrion IT Technology, Rhode Island College, Cardi's Furniture, and the Arpin Group. One of the great questions that gets asked on this show and will be answered today by Jeff Broadhead of the Washington County Regional Planning Council is how does community development differ from economic development? Before doing the show, I did not know the differences, the very important nuances between just growing an economy versus growing an economic platform for a community. The bigger question is how many of our cities and towns know the difference? Are they, in fact, building the right financial future? I'll be right back with Jeff, Dave Prescott from Save the Bay, who I almost single-handedly changed his name to Tom, and Tom Gentz, the real Tom, president of the Charlestown Town Council on show three of our tour shot right here at the home of the Westerly Land. Thanks for staying with us. We are here at the Washington, no, I'm sorry, the Westerly <laughs> Land Trust Building. I've been saying it so many times, you got me all goofed up <laughs> That's all right. with the uh, Washington <laughs> County Regional Planning Council, right? That's right. Uh, Jeff Broadhead, so good to see you again. Thanks for, Thank uh, thanks for being with us. Dave Prescott saved the bay down here in Westerly. Correct. Dave, thanks for being with us. And Tom Gentz, Tom, Tom Council President. Charlestown and competitor on the moving side. I still can't <laughs> believe you with North American van. No, no, no. I, I worked my way through college doing that. <laughs> come on, on, come on, Peter. Camera. <laughs> Jeff, a little bit about you and the council. Well, the council is an organization which a lot of people haven't heard of because it works primarily behind the scenes. Um, we were formed sort of from two ways. One was um, from a president, a vice president actually of Washington Trust Bank named Michael Rao talking with the president of University of Rhode Island, Bob Carruthers. And they said that if the towns don't start communicating more in South County, uh, that it will turn, that the sprawl, urban sprawl, will turn us into Cranston and Warwick, mm -hmm. which are great towns. I grew up in Cranston. But uh, the feeling of Washington County is farm, forest, beach, villages, open space. Absolutely. It is not subdivision, subdivision, subdivision. And so uh, they began a set of informal meetings of the towns. And over a period of about 10 years, it morphed into the formal organization that we are now. We're a membership organization. Our members are the towns of Washington County. All focused on community development. Focused on, yes. Focused on, f really, f we don't use that word particularly, but it per permeates everything that we do. Okay. Uh, economic development is a part of what we do, which is much more jobs and growth, whereas uh, we also have a large uh, amount of our work is for preservation, um, particularly in the last year to work on something called transfer of development rights, which preserves farm and forest well, we'll and fosters we'll development in villages. We'll, we'll, get, we'll talk more we'll, about we'll that. We'll get to that. Don't yeah. forget the jobs on, on our side, though. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, why is there an office uh, here for Save the Bay. How long have you been here? Um, we've been here since uh, 2007. We were actually asked to um, come down to this area. Uh, Save the Bay is, is 42 years old this year, so we've been around in the state for a long time. And initially we were focused directly on Narragansett Bay, and then we learned that we can't just look at the bay, we have to look at the watershed. Um, and down here we were actually asked about Little Narragansett Bay, which is a small little sister mm. of Narragansett Bay, um, even though they're not connected. And um, we were asked to bring that same kind of advocacy and our restoration programs and our education programs down here and be able to advocate for this area. So a lot of my responsibility is the south coast of Rhode Island. And it's important that you're, as you had said earlier before we got on camera, that you're part of the community, that, yeah. you, that you're established. We wanted here. to make sure that we were going to be a resource within the community and actually have our office 
right here in, in West Village. And you have me all goofed up because I'm calling him Tom, which should be Dave. I'm going to call you Dave, Mr. <laughs> North right. American over there. <laughs> tell us about... I tell never us should about have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> you never I, I thought we'd be brothers. I'll be saying <laughs> tricks. Well, we're going to be by the time. Okay. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> tell us about uh, the Charlestown and, and uh, your role there. Well, it, Charlestown is about 7,000 people year-round, and it booms to 20,000 in the summertime. So we are a coastal recreation community. We also have a huge amount of open space in town, so it has a very rural character. And the fact that you know, we have a very efficient town government and great staff there in Charlestown so that the residents get good services. And what are the kind of the major industries that, that carry the jobs and the economy? Tourism. 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 Okay. Um, let me ask you this, because you started to, to bring up this point, <coughs> Jeff, even before I asked you. So you're clairvoyant today, too. Um, <coughs> how does community development then differ, do you think, from economic development? I'm going to stay away from technical definitions and, and more the feeling of it. Community development to me and to our organization is, uh, the, is all of the needs of the community, the citizens, and the environment kind of rolled into what is smart to do. Mm. Uh, where, where should development be? It shouldn't be just everywhere. But, but, and, and then how can we foster it being there? What's a critical resource in the environment that needs to be addressed? Uh, what is a, an organizational um, barrier to being smart as local communities. And what we try to do at the Planning Council is to help the towns because Charlestown is a rural town. It doesn't have a huge employment base, but its citizens work in Wakefield and Westerly and Providence. And, uh, and so at the Planning Council, what we try to do is address those issues that transcend town boundaries and develop the whole community so give us some into a happier, healthier place. Give us some examples. Sure. Uh, one of the bigger issues that's been important lately is energy and how much energy Very is used. Uh, it's both a cost issue and it's an environmental issue. So we've addressed it on the cost side by working to improve the efficiency of 46 public buildings in the last year and a half Good work. with more to come at a much deeper level in some of the ones that's that are across about to happen. Washington or South County? It, not every town. Okay. Six of the towns, but and in that six project. Of how many, nine, did you six say? of nine. Okay. And we also worked with two towns outside of technically Washington County. So because I like the word South County because better. Because you had that expertise. We had the expertise. They didn't have the size. So we also worked with Jamestown and West Greenwich for very different reasons. Jamestown, we were asked to come help West Greenwich because we were using grant dollars, which would be larger if we got the entire school system, which was Exeter, West Greenwich. Exeter is one of our towns. So we invited West Greenwich to participate. It's, so it was a self-serving on the part of our communities to include our neighbor, West Greenwich, which we include often in projects anyway. We're going to go to a, a break. Tom, um, I guess the, the main question that we kind of want to focus on when we get back is, is really how does the work done by Save the Bay impact the community? <laughs> You're doing it again. You're calling him Tom. I I'm did. Tom. He's Dan. No, I switched it. <laughs> oh, you did? I switched it. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, I'm Dave. I'm Tom. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm Fred. Yeah. Yeah. Me, just don't call me late right. for dinner. And he's doing a great job. <laughs> he is. Of, of answering the boat. It is Save the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got that right. There you I'll go. be right back. <laughs> 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 yep, you got me all goofed up. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. We'll call you Paul. We want to take time to thank our many sponsors who, along with you, our viewer, continue to make this show possible. Together with the Arpen Group, Cardi's Furniture, Atrion, Rhode Island College, Handy Law, Merrill Lynch, and Ocean State Financial, and our newest partner, W.B. Mason, we have taken a great ride in 2012 across many cities and towns to major events and have built our global audience using newspapers, radio, TV, and the web to over 200,000 listeners and viewers per month. We've done that by being graced with great guests, including governors and senators, government leaders, and true pioneers and innovators at schools, nonprofits, businesses, and on the streets of our cities and our towns. As Renewable Now continues to grow locally, regionally, and across the globe, we'd like other sponsors to join as 
partners and share in our success. If you want to promote across the booming green economy with a platform like no other, please contact us by emailing our staff at fiscalrecordings at cox.net or call our co-producer and head of business development, Anne-Marie Fisk, at 401-603-2097. You can find the same information at our website as well. We are helping to transform the world. We'd love to do the same for you and for your organization. We are Renewable Now, the business side. Prescott. Yeah. How's that? Excellent. Number two. Number two. <laughs> number one. Number three. Yeah, Save the you. bay. All right. Um, tell us about the work you do down here and, and, and how it impacts community development. Um, like I mentioned before, we were actually asked to come down in this region, and um, Save the Bay has always been focused on the resource, whether that's Narragansett Bay, Little Narragansett Bay, the coastline, or whatnot. And one of the initial things we did in terms of involving community was I realized right off the bat that there's, there was a, a lack of communication across a town border and a state border and that border was the Pawkatuck River. Mm -hmm. Literally it's 75 feet across and there wasn't enough communication going across that. So, But it was a barrier. But it's a barrier. It's a, it's a political barrier but mm -hmm. to the fish and whatnot they don't know that it was a barrier. Right. And so what we did was to get everyone at the same table to talk about the water quality issues that were affecting the area and to work more closely to, together to to come up with the solutions. And that's one of the things we hope, like I mentioned, being a community resource is really a, a big thing for us and trying to work on things like water quality, including stormwater issues, um, rising sea levels, restoration work. We do a lot with restoration work and as well as environmental education and stewardship. Well, and there's a, there's a great segue because you've had plenty of storm damage down mm -hmm. here, right? What has been Save the Bay's role in trying to work with some of the, the, the towns and the, and the cities that work with Washington County? Um, we live in a very dynamic area, um, and we were, the Superstorm Sandy definitely proved that there. We were very fortunate that it wasn't worse, but it was very bad here. Obviously, it wasn't as bad, and I would never compare that to what happened in New York, New Jersey, but it shows that we are vulnerable, and we have to look at that vulnerability in the long term. We have to look at all the decisions that we make on the local level and how do we make ourselves less vulnerable. Mm. We may not be able to. You know, we may be doing as much as we can to rebuild now and get hit with a storm next yep. year. Yep. So we're really advocating on the state level to take this as a priority in terms of long-term planning. And one of the things that we had advocated for was for our Coastal Resources Management Council to go through a long-term planning process, which they are titling now the Shoreline Change SAMP, or CES Special Area Management Plan. And what that'll do, will bring together all the municipalities, all of the state agencies, the local nonprofits, land trusts, and whatnot, and get everyone at the table to talk about climate change and, and the reality of climate change and vulnerability and, and so what is sustainable. So that, we're really excited that that's actually moving forward. And that's, that's, that's a wonderful uh, effort. Certainly, we just finished up a series of shows on looking at the local impact of climate change yeah. and how it manifests itself. What about in your town, and what's your rebuild been like? Do you work very closely with a Washington County Planning Council? Well, or? The town of Charlestown lost eight buildings that were placarded red. One was totally destroyed by Superstorm Sandy. So we had virtually the same amount of damage that Westerly did, because they only lost another few houses mm -hmm. over us. But we have a smaller runway, so to speak, and there are no businesses that are <coughs> along there. On, uh, there's a huge amount of debris that was, was uh, presented to all over Charlestown Beach and in uh, in Central Beach on a place called Surfside. Uh, during the storm, I watched water heaters float by and cisterns and couches and refrigerators right, you know, out of houses yep. in the road. It was a horrible situation. Uh, as a matter of fact, on Earth Day, which uh, Save the Bay is, is certainly working with, we're going to have a cleanup day on Charlestown Beach mm. starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, and everybody out there 
uh, that's listening can come and join us and we can pick up the debris and clean up our and neighbors. Get, and get ready for the yep. summer. Mm -hmm. Small community like Charlestown, yep. do you get overshadowed? You're part of this uh, planning <clears throat> council. Do you get overshadowed? Do you get the right resources? Because you still have to, I know you're more residential, right? But don't you still have to grow some kind of economy, some kind of community? We, we do. And, and the, we also have to watch our taxpayer dollars. So the value of being in Jeff's organization is that we can work with other towns and combine ideas and combine positions and combine thought processes. Um, if you look at Fairfax, Virginia, for example, a million people the size of, of the state of Rhode Island, they have a county government. Hmm. And all the, all the public services are delivered through one county government. So it, it would make sense for consolidation purposes to work through an organization like Jeff's, and I'm, I'm thrilled to work with the other eight towns in Washington County Regional Planning Council because this is, this is the future of South County, I believe, is to have the ability to work with other cities and towns and combine services. And it's a great, it's a great point. There's been a lot of talk about the, we could really strip out a lot of layers here in Rhode Island and consolidate, and I don't know what your thoughts about that, but how do you help cities and towns get resources? Is it you, get, you help source them on a state level? It's, it's that you bring this collaborative to, together? It's that you try to push certain projects? How do you do that for the cities and towns? It's all of those, everything that you said. By working with multiple towns, we can bring resources in that may not be available otherwise. On the energy project, we were able to um, bring in over a million dollars, about 1.1 million in grants to help with that project. Uh, the, as an organization, we, we are a 501c3, a nonprofit, so we have to make our own living in the world. Mm. So we're moving more into an earned income, and that fits into your, your question, because we have to earn our living, and we're going to do so by providing services to the towns more cheaply than they can individually do it, by collectively working across town boundaries. We're doing it right now on some information technology work. Uh, we've been doing it on energy work. Um, we have a major project to uh, transform the way that towns have to s light their streets uh, and reform that. It's right now it's mandated. They Does have that to mean going to LEDs or? Eventually, yes. LEDs are much better. They use half the energy. <coughs> they last five times as long. But the project you're talking yeah. about, is it conservation? Is it? Is it is it's it conservation <coughs> and it is simply good system design. Right now the towns pay to National Grid to put street lights up on the utility poles, some of which are owned by Verizon, some which are owned by National Grid. The rate is set by the state, by the Public Utilities Commission. That rate is much higher than it needs to be. And 70 Massachusetts towns have purchased their lights from their utilities, 19 of them from National Grid. That's really their savings is a two-year Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a 600 pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house. It's a delivery. It's a truck. No, son. That's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group, sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award-winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800-343-3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. Staying with us, Jeff. Let's finish that thought on the streetlights, the savings, what happened in Massachusetts. Yeah, there's two ways to do it. Uh, the the lighting technology that we use in our streetlights right now is called high pressure sodium. It makes this yellow light. It's a dirty yellow light. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember when we transformed to that lighting, and everybody hated it. But now we're used to it. It's what we see everywhere. If you go into an area with LED lights, all of a sudden the fire truck is bright red. The public safety officer is standing in his or her vest and it just pops out. The grass is green. Um, and as someone who's colorblind, I could care less about that <laughs> stuff, but uh, it's, it, it really does happen. So uh, it, it, LED technology is important, but it's not the immediate thing. The immediate thing is that the towns are basically being overcharged through an old process for, they don't have local control as to what kind of uh, lighting they put in. They can't put LEDs in right now because there's no tariff for it. But what kind of potential savings? 
does this represent? Right now, we're looking at a, the, uh, just our towns pay about $1.2 million a year for streetlights. And we believe that number can be reduced by more than $200,000 a year, That's a including return. investing into LED lights, including $200,000 a year for LED lights. Fantastic. Which, of so. course, they would have some of that cash flow because they yeah. would own it, they would save money, they'd be able to reinvest in upgrading That's right. to LEDs. That's right. the, you have the, a in wonderful the, observatory yes. there. And I've been, I've spent, frost, is it frosty? Frosty drip. Yeah, and I've spent a lot of time there. And it's amazing. The clarity, but talk about how this kind of impacts light well, pollution and how you see things there. In the, the Charlestown Town Council, in working with our Planning Commission, passed a dark skies ordinance, which assists us in being one of the darkest places along the coast between Washington D.C. and Maine. The value of that, and the value of the con you know forming an association with the street light ordinance that that Jeff is working on, is that all the street lights then will be converted to dark sky compliant and less glare and uh, also achieve you know a better tax break for our, that's, our that's taxpayers fabulous. in town. So and part of it is it doesn't spill, right? No. It's very, it's, it's very, very focused. Yeah, it's very focused. You've been here how long, Dave? Uh, going on almost six years. Um, <clears throat> how do you see, what and what have you seen as far as changes in Washington County, uh, some economic or economic, as you might say, development, but, but balance with the environmental and natural resource protection. And do you see kind of a bright future for that for Washington County? Um, that's a great question. Um, here, I think that environmental responsibility and protecting the environment is good for business. They kind of explain a great couple of examples right here about, about lights. Um, we have some great, amazing resources, our bays, our coasts, our rivers, our shorelines. And we rely, especially in Washington, country, on, uh, Washington County, on tourism. So without those resources, without those resources being protected, we have no tourism, we have no economy, we have no businesses. Right, so, so we're fully invested. So right? we need to be fully invested, we, and we need the community to really understand these resources and become better stewards of them on all different levels, whether it's light, whether it's water quality, whether it's rising sea levels. All these things play together in terms of, um, of our future. And I think an important point is that a lot of times people will see a nonprofit like a Save the Bay as an obstacle mm -hmm. to growth and that you're trying to resist it. But mm -hmm. in essence, really, you're trying to cultivate it yeah, in a smart way. It right? is, you know, and I, and I think that exactly what Jeff was talking about, but getting everyone to the table, we try to do the same thing. We make sure that, you know, when we're dealing with environmental issues, everyone who needs to be at the table is at the table to talk about both sides and to come up with solutions that are sustainable. Um, for, for you, yes. um, are you happy where Washington County is, where Charlestown is, and what, what is your view of how we should balance? Well, I, as, as, Number two, Dave said, <laughs> uh, we are very much based on tourism. And another example of, of how we worked with Save the Bay and with the state of Rhode Island is we dredged one of our ponds, uh, Breachways, last year. 77,000 cubic yards of material was taken out of the Breachway and out of a channel, which gives better access for recreation purposes, which goes to the tourism and also for fish habitat and eelgrass. So growth. the environmental yep. Both impact. Sides. It's, it's a win-win, and Save the Bay was right there at the table with us for that, as well as the state. And Offering the a lot of expertise. Yes. Okay. And the town of Charleston actually put up $300,000. So that urged But what do you see as the potential return on investment? <clears throat> Is it good for you for that investment? Absolutely, or? absolutely. And, and our town administration purchased a GPS uh, device which enables them to measure the sand so when Sandy and when Superstorm Nemo came in, we could tell FEMA exactly how much sand went into the area that was dredged and get reimbursed on that. Wow. So we're taking a very proactive role as a town to make sure that we maximize our refund and return from, you know, from storms like Sandy and, and Nemo. What about on your side? Um, do most of the cities and towns have that balance? Are they approaching that balance? Do they have the right guidance? And what is your role, the council's role, in trying to create smart growth? Well, we're most a facilitator, uh, and we bring, we convene, bring people together, and then where it's appropriate that we can take the lead on a project, we do so. Uh, it's often, I mean, the dredging project from Charlestown, which get the, I think you left out the, the sand went to 
South Kingstown. Yes. Right. Mm. So it, it was With a the southwesterly breeze. It was a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't put it on South Kingston, but they're the beneficiaries. <laughs> Less than a but minute. It, okay, multiple towns working together uh, in ways that they cannot do when they work their own. Town council meetings are, by nature and by legality, very structured meetings. There's not free flowing discussion. At our group, the town, one town councilor from each town gets together and talks. They identify problems, they identify solutions, Good and then point. we as an organization can act on those solutions. So a very different style meeting and an yep. exchange of ideas. And as you pointed out very early on, trying to um, circumvent any of the borders, right? And have best practice. And respect the them. borders and save money and save the environment across the borders. But everybody wants to live in their own town. They don't want to live in Washington County. They want to live in Charleston or Narragansett. So respect the individual. Okay. Okay. Job. I'll be right back. Cardi's is focused to give you a better night's sleep by working with those who have the same goal. Like our nation's most recognized sleep specialist, Dr. Bruce. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce. I'm here at Cardi's personally training Nairobi's team to assess your sleep habits and needs, focusing on my four tenets of better sleep, thermo neutrality, balance of pressure, complete relaxation, and tranquil sleep, all of which will help you get a better night's rest. Enjoy an introductory free Dr. Bruce box spring, Cardi's Furniture. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Despite my many efforts to change Dave to a Tom, he not only survived that, but also survived during the recent battering of coastal Rhode Island and his continued great efforts on behalf of Save the Bay to protect Charlestown's and Washington County's greatest resource, water. Both salt water and fresh water. To me, what was very interesting about this segment was how a very small town like Charlestown, very simple in its industrial base, benefited very much from the terrific work done by Jeff and his team. I love the effort of successfully culling together very different cities and towns to share resources, ideas, programs, and bring new prosperity to the very large hubs and the very small ones, who are clearly no less critical to the well-being of this state. For Charlestown and others, it is a wonderful example of the business side of green. I'm Peter Arpin for Renewable Now, and I will see you next week.